Okay, welcome everyone to our A to J Author new user training. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. Our topic today is how to create repeat loops, but it's specifically tailored for A to J Author 5.0. There are a couple of different changes. It's very similar, though, to how to create repeat loops in 4.0. A lot of what you'll see is different are the different screenshots. So it looks a little bit different, but it functionally acts the same way as it did in 4.0. Our agenda today will go over what is a repeat loop, the two ways to use repeat loops, either collecting the number first or asking to add more at the end, talk about variables within repeat loops, and additional resources. So what is a repeat loop? A repeat loop or a repeat dialog, um, those two terms are, are interchangeable, is a series of questions that will display to the end user multiple times based upon the user's input. You use a repeat loop if the same type of information needs to be collected several times. Instead of trying to create those questions over and over again, you create the loop and then set it to repeat. There are two ways to make a repeat loop in A to J Author. Both have the same outcome. You can either collect the number of items or people first, so you ask up front how many times they need to go through the loop, or you can ask if there are any more items or people at the end of the loop. So number one, collect the number up front, and option number two is ask to add more at the end. The first way, collecting the number first, you use when an end user will likely know right away how many times they need to go through the loop. For example, people, hopefully, always know how many children they have. So when you have questions about children, like the, ch the child's name, the child's date of birth, the child's parent, other parent, the child's address, those kind of things, people should know up front how many times they're going to have to go through that loop. So this screenshot is an example. You ask the question, how many children do you have? So there are seven steps for repeat loops done by collecting the number first. The first step is to create the set of questions that will repeat. So you know that you want to ask about, the, if in the sample one that I created, I ask about the child's name, and then I ask about the child's date of birth. So right away I created those two questions. Step two is to create a counting variable. The counting variable keeps track of how many times the user has gone through that set of questions. This screenshot right here is of the variables tab in A to J 5.0, and you can see that the one that the arrow is pointing to, the darkly highlighted one, is child's count. That is my counting variable for the children um, questions. It's a number. It doesn't repeat, so it's false. This number is only asked once. And for a comment, I put this as the counting variable for collecting the number first. Counting variables, you can see here that my counting variable is a little bit different than the other variables in the list in the way that it's named. So counting variables are named capitalize the first letter, so capitalize child, and capitalize the word count and smoosh them together, no spaces. So right away looking at my list of variables, I can tell that this is a counting variable. This is similar to the naming convention that we use generally within the um, document assembly community of uh, capitalizing the first letter of the first word and then not capitalizing anything else and then including the two letter indicator at the end. So this is just another way to instantly spot what type of, what, what type of variable it is and to know that it is a counting variable. The third step that you do once you have your counting variable is to create your how many question. So it's the first question of the repeat dialog, but it is not part of the questions that are repeated to the end user. So it's the jumping off point, but the end user is only going to answer this question one time. You can see at the top here is that screenshot, how many children do you have? The back end of that is the second, is the lower screenshot, and this is the actual question itself. So on this how many question, you set the counting variable to one in the options field under the button section. So here um, in my new A to J 5.0, you scroll through to get to the button section. There's one button, it's a continue button. The destination question is the question where I ask the child's name, which is the first question in the loop. The repeat option is to set counting variable to one. And then I tell A to J that this is part of the child count loop. This question is how many question? What the end user is actually doing when they choose from this list is selecting that variable number of children and you. 
which I'm going to use later on. So this how many question also gathers in the field the number of children they have. So number of children NU. Step five is to identify the counting variable in the counting variable field on the question tab of every question to be repeated. So here is the standard question text. What is the name of, and I'm using a, a macro here, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But what is the name of the first child, second child, third child? And I'm telling A to J that this is part of this child's count. So you do not identify the counting variable on the question section on that how many question, but only on every question that you want repeated. The way that you know in your map in A to J author, and this is a screenshot close up of my mapper, um, that this is part of the repeat loops, is this weird little circle arrow thing. So this um, is a blown up version of it. It's a little bit hard to see because it's pixelated, but um, it is a curved arrow. And that's how you know that these two questions, child name and child's birth date, are repeat questions. But you can see that this how many question, how many children do you have, is not repeated. It does not, it's not part of the loop. It's the jumping off point for the loop. On the sixth step, on that very last question to be repeated, what you're gonna wanna do is increment the counting variable in the options field under the button section. So just like on that how many question, I set counting variable to one, on the very last question to repeat, I wanna increment that counting variable. And I need to tell A to J author that this is part of this child count. So the counting variables child count. And basically this says they've gone through the series of questions once and put that tally mark. And when the user presses the continue button, the counting variable number will increase by one each time. So step seven plays off of the fact that you've now incremented. The step seven is to create a condition either in the advanced logic or um, in the question design window itself or in the logic in the all logic section. You want this on the last question to be repeated, the same question that's in this screenshot. So in my sample that I'll show you, it's child's birth date. Here the button, I'm incrementing it. And then if I scroll down a little bit further, I would get to this advanced logic section. And here's the change from 4.0 to 5.0. It's basically advanced logic. It's a little bit more um, scripting and a little less clicking buttons. So here the logic, the script that you have to use is after. So it's after the user presses that continue button. And I want to compare if child count, that is the number of times they've gone through the loop, which we just incremented in that button, is equal to the number of children NU, which was the question which was the field that I collected in that how many question. So I'm comparing have the number of times they've gone through it equal the number of times they said they needed to go through it. If it's true, so if this equals this then go to do you have any, which is, is taking them out of the loop. Else, so if this does not equal this, then they need to go back through the loop and go to the question 2-child's name, which is my first loop question. So again, if false, they're going back through the loop. So the child count number is they haven't gone through the loops enough times to equal how many times they said they needed to go through the loop. If false, they're going back through the loop. If true, then they are going to, to skip out of the loop. They've done it enough times and they are going to move on to the next set of questions. So this is the big change between 4.0 and 5.0. There's a little bit more scripting logic that you're going to need to do rather than just clicking buttons. So the second way to do repeat loops in A to J author is asking to add more at the end. If the end user is likely to not know how many times they're going to have to go through the loop. You're going to want to ask them the loop questions and then give them a question that says, do you have another asset to add? So for example, people might not know exactly how many assets over $100 they have, but they can start making the list as they go through it with you in the guided interview. So they might not know, you know, they have their house, their car, their jet ski, their, their stocks, their bonds, all that kind of stuff. They might not think of that, you know, I have... 14 assets over $100 that I need to talk about. But as they keep going through, they're like, okay, yes, and I have this one to add, and I have this one to add, and I have this one to add. So this is the way for when they don't know upfront how many assets or how many things they need to go through the loop. This one only has six steps, so it's one step easier, but um, it gives you the exact same outcome. So again, you create that set of questions to be repeated. Here I have questions about assets, so I wanna know the asset name and the asset value. Then you create the counting variable again. So again, that darkly highlighted asset count, it's a number, it does not repeat, 
and I know it's just a, it's just a counting variable because I've used the naming convention of capitalizing both asset and count and not putting a space in between. Step three is to create a question that leads into the loop but is not part of the loop. So again, it's that jumping off question. This is the question of do you have any assets over $100? Maybe they don't have any assets at all and they don't need to go through the loop at all. So if they answer yes, I'm going to set the counting variable to one as a repeat option. And I'm going to tell A to J author what counting variable to associate with this action. In this case, it's asset count. This is just on the yes button. If the end user selects no, I'm just going to move on to the next set of questions branching normally. So remember, it's only the yes button where you set the counting variable to one for asking to add more at the end type of repeat loop options. Step four is to again identify the counting variable in that counting variable field. So every question that I want repeated, I need to tell A to J author that this is part of the repeat. So it's the same at the bottom of the question text. You just add in asset count as the counting variable. Again, you can see that in the mapper that any questions that are repeated have that weird little circle arrow thing indicator. And the questions that do not get repeated do not have the circle arrow. So the do you have any question, not repeated. But asset name and the do you have any more question are repeated. Step five on that last question to be repeated. So in my example, it's do you have another asset over $100 to add? There's two steps to this one. On the yes, so yes, they have another asset. So they are telling you, the end user is telling you, yes, I want to go through this again. That's where you increment the counting variable. And you tell A to J what counting variable to use. So asset count. So you increment counting variable. You're basically putting that that hashtag that or that hash mark, the tally, you're increasing the number of times they've gone through the loop by one. And then um, you set the destination question to go back to the first of the repeating questions. So in this case, it's asset name. On the no button, you're going to take the end user out of the loop. So they're done. They don't need to go through the loop again. So the destination is your next set of questions. In my case, it's the all done question. And the repeat option is normal. So it's not repeating. They're leaving the loop. So let's talk a little bit about variables in a repeat dialog. So variables in a repeat dialog are set up the same way that you would set up variables in any other question. They look exactly the same. So here, for example, I'm asking for the child's first name. The variable is child name first T. The only difference is the question is identified as part of the repeat dialog by including a counting variable on that question text. So question text, what is the first asset over $100 and the estimated value? And how does A to J know this is part of the repeat loop? I tell it right here, counting variable, and I select it asset count. Variables in a repeat dialog hold multiple values. So basically, A to J author adds a pound sign and the loop number to the end of the variable name, basically creating new variables each time you go through the loop. So for example, child name first TE becomes child name first TE number one when I go through the loop once. When I go through the loop twice, it becomes child name first TE number two. So in the first time I went through the loop, I said my first child's name was Betty. My second child's name was John. Both Betty and John are stored within the variable child name first TE. But if I only want to call out Betty or John, I can call it out by using this variable child name first TE number one. And, but what if you don't know what the, what the number will be? You can use variables in a repeat dialog to show all the values. So here's, here's the value, all the values held by this variable. So house and car are held within variable name TE, are held within asset name TE. But if I did asset name TE number one, only house would show up. If I said asset name TE number two, only car would show up. And A to J automatically adds the comma and the and, separating them out for you, so you don't need to do that. So if you want, the, in this example with the asset count, do you have another asset over $100 to add? I had the end user ask, what assets have I already told you about? And the guide avatar replies, you've told me about your, and whatever assets they've set. In this example, it's house and car. So say I want to call out specifically that number one child or that number two child. 
but I don't I don't want to have to type in child name first TE number one because the second time they go through the loop, that's not going to be the correct name. I can use this variable macro, variable name TE pound, and then the counting variable, close the brackets, and then percent sign, percent sign, to show the value of the variable according to which round of the loop the current question is displaying for. So here's the text, what is child name first TE pound child count? apostrophe s date of birth and each time I go through the loop it's gonna say what is Joey's date of birth what is Julie's date of birth what is Bobby's date of birth it's gonna use the information from the previous question where I gathered the child's name to then specify for the end user which child I'm talking about this is a great way to customize especially if you have a long set of questions that you're asking to remind the end user which child or which item you're asking about and instead of just saying, what is the first child's date of birth? What is the second child's date of birth? You've already gathered that child's name. You might as well use the name. If you wanted to just say, what is the name of the third child? What is the name of the first child? You want to use the ordinal. You can use the variable macro and the function ordinal and then call out the counting variable. It shows the word first, second, 143rd, whatever, according to whichever round of the loop the current question is displaying for. So in the text, it would say what is the name of percent sign percent sign ordinal parentheses bracket around the variable name child count close bracket close parentheses uh, percent sign percent sign and then it would display to the end user the second screenshot and it would say what is the name of the first child the first time they go through the loop the second child the third child etc all right before we go on to the additional resources i'm going to take us out to my sample that I created here in A to J Author 5.0. Let me blow that up for you. So here is my sample um, that I created for this webinar. It's pretty simple. It has step one is going to do ask for the number first. Step two is going to ask to add more at the end. And then step three is the end. So let's go into step zero. And I'm going to preview it. Let me clear my script because I've been testing in, in here before. I've cleared my script, I've cleared my variables. Now I can type in whatever. Let's see, my name is John. We'll change the gender just so you can see the different avatars. So the first question is how many children do you have? How many children? Let's say I have two children. So I'm telling the guide avatar, the me as the end user is telling the guide avatar, I need to go through the loop two times. You can see here on the left in the script, Number of children and you, which I just clicked on that last question, is set to two. So what is the name? And also child count is set to one because I just jumped into this loop. So what is the name of the first child? Let's say the name is Ju Julie. What is Julie's date of birth? So there I've used the variable macro to call it specifically and to remind the end user which child I'm talking about. Say Julie's a newborn. So what is the name of the second child? And you can see here, logic after question on step 17 over here of the script, it tested if child count equals number of children and you. It found it to be false. That's why it's red. If it was true, it would be green. And so because it was false, it went to the child's name question again. I've also incremented repeat variable again because I'm now through the loop a second time, so now my child count is at two. You can see here, child first name TE number one is Julie. Now when I ask, when I fill in the name of the second child, let's say Bob Doe, you can see that now I have child first name TE number two, Bob, number one, Julie. And now what is Bob's date of birth? Again, it's calling out specifically which child I'm talking about. When I hit continue, it's going to again evaluate whether child count is equal to number of children and you. This time it's going to be true because I told them I needed to go through the loop twice and I've now gone through the loop twice. So if we look over here in the script, you can see that it's turned green now. So number 30, logic after question. If child count equals number of children and you, so it's green and there's a checkbox or a check so you know that it's correct, go to the do you have any question. So I've moved out of the loop. 
This question, do you have any assets over $100? Well, to show you the loop, I'm going to say yes. If I said no, it would have taken us out of the loop completely. We never would have entered it. So what is your first asset over $100? Say my house. I hit continue. Do I have another? So here's the, what have I told you about already. You have told me about your house. So do you have another asset to add? Let's just say yes. So you have a car worth $10,000. So do I have another? No. If I say yes, I'll go through the loop again. If I say no, then I'm taken to the end question altogether. So this shows you the two ways that you can do repeat loops in A to J author. Either ask for the number up front or ask to add more at the end. And if we go here for any additional resources, we're working on the authoring guide. It's almost complete. When it is done, it will be posted to a2jauthor.org. Um, but we also have trainings and presentations on a2jauthor 4.0, um, which is very similar to the way that you do it in 5.0. And those are on our YouTube channel as well. And you can also check our authoring guide for how to do it in 4.0.